I'd like to share with you 10 reasons why Satan hates the doctrine of the pre-tribulation rapture. First of all, faith in the resurrection, which includes the rapture, the resurrection of believers, is how we are justified. It tells us in Romans chapter 4 that righteousness is imputed to us if we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. We are justified by faith because we believe that Jesus was raised from the dead the third day and we believe he bore our sins in his own body. And we believe that we were raised up with him. That's what baptism is. It's a symbolic uh, identifying yourself with Christ that the old man is dead and the new man is raised to new life with Christ. And so justification comes by faith in the resurrection. That's why Satan fights the resurrection, which includes the rapture of the church. Jesus said, because I live, you shall live also in John 14. The Antichrist spirit, here's another reason Satan hates the doctrine of the rapture. Uh, the Antichrist spirit denies Jesus coming in the flesh. It denies his bodily resurrection when he was raised from the dead. And it denies that he's bodily going to come back and receive believers to himself. It tells us in 1 John 4, 1 through 3, Believe not every spirit, beloved, but test the spirits, see whether they're of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist where you've already heard that it should come and is already in the world. Um, so just be alert if you hear of any, um, any teacher or prophet, and there's some very renowned prophets, quote-unquote prophets, who deny Jesus' bodily resurrection. They deny he's coming back bodily. They say Jesus is just uh, a spirit. He's no longer God in the flesh. That is an antichrist spirit, and they are prevalent, very prevalent. It's an insidious teaching you have to be careful of. The rapture of the church is the body of Christ being raised from the dead. And Satan doesn't like that truth. He hates the fact that we are going to bodily be raised from the dead. God's going to change this vile body that we're in, our corruptible body, and give us an incorruptible, glorified, physical body, just like Jesus had when he was raised from the dead. Another reason that Satan hates the doctrine of the rapture is it shows that Jesus is going to personally return to reign it's not he's not staying up in heaven and waiting for the seven mountain uh, dominionists who falsely teach they're going to take over the world and jesus doesn't have to come back personally you know he doesn't have to come back bodily we'll take care of it you know we'll do it on behalf of jesus no um, the the first corinthians 15 tells us clearly that jesus establishes his own kingdom and those who teach against the resurrection from the dead uh, Paul was, was admonishing the believers in Corinth not to believe that. He says, how say some among you there's no resurrection from the dead? How, some, how why are some of you saying that there's not going to be a rapture? If there's no resurrection from the dead, then even Christ isn't risen. If you're denying there's going to be a rapture, then you're saying that Jesus is not risen because uh, he was bodily raised from the dead. It was his body that raised on the third day. If Christ be not risen, Paul argues, then our preaching is vain and your faith is vain also. And yet, yeah, and we're found to be false witnesses of God because we testify that that God raised Jesus from the dead, whom He didn't raise up. If it's really true that the dead do not rise, because if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not raised either. So if there's not going to be a rapture, you're denying that Jesus was also raised from the dead. And if Christ is not raised, from the dead, then your faith is vain and you're still in your sins. That's how important the resurrection from the dead is. That's how important the doctrine of the rapture is. Paul said, if it's in this life only we have hope in Christ, we're of all men most miserable. But we have a greater hope. We have the blessed hope that we're going to be bodily raised from the dead. Just like Christ was risen from the dead. He was first risen and then the first fruits of them that sleep. And then afterward those who are Christ at his coming. And then comes the end when he, Jesus, shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he 
shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. This is totally opposite of what the Dominionists are teaching. They teach, oh, the seven mountains, we're going to take over the government and over the media and the finances and education. We're going to take over the world. We're going to get these high positions of authority and we're taking over and we're going to reign in Jesus' stead. No, Jesus himself, he will be the one who reigns and rules and he puts down all rule and all authority and power. If you're trying to build your kingdom now, you're trying to institute the kingdom of Jesus before he returns, you're actually working for the Antichrist, that one world government system, and you're being deceived. Don't fall for it. Another reason Satan hates the doctrine of the rapture of the church is because it causes the church to be steadfast. Look what Paul the Apostle said to the Philippians in chapter 3, verses 10 through 4, 1. He said that I may know him, Jesus, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, that I might be made conformable unto his death. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection of the dead. Paul says, I'm looking for that rapture. I'm excited. I can't wait until I will attain to the same type of resurrection Jesus had when he was bodily raised from the dead. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence we also look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is going to change our vile body at the rapture, so that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things to himself. Therefore, my beloved brethren, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. So Paul is saying that the doctrine of the rapture causes us to desire to meet the Lord in the air, to be with the Lord, and he's going to change our vile body at the rapture. We're to be looking for that. It says, from whence also we're looking for our Lord from heaven. So uh, that is to be the mentality of the church. Yes, we're to be doing the work of evangelism while we're here, but we're not supposed to be setting up our own kingdom and our own government in this world. No, we're looking for the Lord from heaven. Hallelujah. Another reason Satan hates the doctrine of the rapture is in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 58. Because the rapture, that uh, having an eternal mindset and realizing we're just here temporarily and that Jesus could come back at any moment, causes us to be steadfast and abounding in the work of the Lord. It keeps your priorities right. You know, you're not out eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, and then uh, just living for yourself. You realize that we have a mandate. Jesus said, to his disciples, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. These signs shall follow them that believe. He tells us in 1 Corinthians 15 that in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, this mortal must put on immortality. So then this corruptible, when it, this corruptible puts on incorruption, and this mortal puts on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? And then he says, Therefore, my beloved, that is in light of the rapture. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. Because of the rapture, because his coming is going to be like a thief in the night, because we're going to be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, be steadfast, be unmovable, and always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Satan doesn't want you to be steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in the work of the Lord. He doesn't want you thinking about the rapture. He wants you to deny it, like the false megachurch leaders do. Another reason Satan is, hates the doctrine of the rapture is because it causes believers to live godly, pure lives. Look at uh, Titus chapter 2. It says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. So again, the doctrine of the rapture, when we are looking unto that blessed hope, looking and expecting the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, that causes us to live soberly, 
causes us to live righteously, causes us to deny ungodliness. If you knew you had to stand before Jesus right now, if you knew that in the next five minutes you'd have to stand before Jesus and give an account of your works done in this earth, what would you do? I'd repent quickly, even if I didn't think I had anything to repent of. I'd try to dial somebody's number who I hadn't witnessed to that I don't want them to be lost, and that's what we should be doing. We should be having our focus to keep ourselves right and do the do the work of the gospel. Share the good news with every creature. And first John chapter three also confirms that the doctrine of the rapture causes us to purify ourselves. It says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, that's the rapture, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is, and every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. First John 3, 2 and 3. The doctrine of the rapture has a purifying effect on believers. Another reason Satan hates the doctrine of the pre-tribulation rapture is because it gives us a helmet of salvation. It causes our minds to be protected. It's part of our spiritual armor. Look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 8 through 10. Paul the Apostle says, Let us who are of the day be sober. Let's be alert. Let's be serious. Put on the breastplate of faith and love. And for an helmet, the hope of salvation. The whole context of 1 Thessalonians 4 and 5 is talking about the rapture of the church and how the church is not going to have to go through the day of the Lord. That's a time of great tribulation, great trouble. And so the whole purpose of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 was to encourage the saints that they're not going to even be on the earth. They're not even going to be here when the Antichrist is revealed. And so he says, God has not appointed us to experience that wrath, the time of the day of the Lord, but to obtain salvation or deliverance by our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us so that whether we're awake or asleep at the rapture, we're going to live together with him. And Ephesians 6 confirms again that we need that, that helmet of salvation as part of the armor of God. You have to have the whole armor of God to stand against the devil, the wiles of the devil. And that includes the helmet of salvation, which means guarding your mind, keeping your mind on the fact that Jesus is coming again. Another reason Satan hates the doctrine of the rapture is it gives believers comfort. Of course he doesn't want you comforted. And he doesn't want you to have good hope either. First Thessalonians 4, 14 and 18, Paul the Apostle admonishes believers and says, I don't want you to be sorrow like other people and think that when they die, that's it. If you have a believer, a loved one who passes on and they're in the Lord, Paul said, I want you to, to realize that they are going to be resurrected. The Lord himself is going to descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. There's that term, rapture, raptura in Latin, harpazo in Greek. Then we that are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Hallelujah. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. It's a comfort to know that our our loved ones who have passed on are going to be raised from the dead. Their spirit is already with God, but God's actually going to give them a resurrected body. He's going to allow the dust of the earth to be cast out. Read Isaiah 26, 19 through 21, where it tells us, Your dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing you that dwell in the dust. For your dew is as the dew of the herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. And then God tells his people, come, my people, and enter into your chambers and hide yourself, as it were, for a little while until the indignation or the wrath be overpassed. For the Lord is coming out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth and the earth shall no more disclose the, the blood and will no more cover the blood of the innocent ones. So we can see here that uh, very clearly the rapture of the church is described in Isaiah 26, 19 through 21. And God calls his people to come into their chambers and shut the door. This is exactly what Jesus was talking about in John 14. He says, don't let your heart be troubled. Do you believe in God? Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going to go away. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come again 
And I will, hallelujah, receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be also. Therefore, brethren, as he tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5, comfort one another with these words. The rapture of the church is a comfort. Satan doesn't want you comforted. He wants you fearful. He wants you in bondage. He wants you confused, thinking you're going to have to fight the Antichrist and hoard up food for seven years. No, if you're ready for the Lord's coming, you won't have to go through one hour, one second of the day of the Lord. That's the time of God's wrath that's poured out upon the ungodly inhabitants of the earth. Thank God that's not us if we're following the Lord. Another reason Satan hates the doctrine of the rapture is it's a foundational teaching that believers must have to go on to spiritual maturity. He'd like us to be uh, spiritual babes and tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. No. God tells us in Hebrews chapter 6 that uh, we should not have to lay again a foundation of six foundational doctrines. We need to go on to maturity. These six foundational doctrines are repentance from dead work, faith toward God, doctrines of baptisms, laying out of hands, and a resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. Resurrection of the dead is part of the foundation, the basic foundation of true Christian doctrine. That your spiritual life is contingent on how settled and how grounded you are on these foundational truths. You have to believe in the resurrection of the dead. Firstly, in Christ's bodily resurrection. If you don't believe he was bodily raised from the dead, then you're not saved. The doctrine of the resurrection of the dead, which includes the rapture of the church, being raised from the dead and being caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, is a foundational truth Satan doesn't want you to have as part of your spiritual foundation. Those who teach against the rapture of the church and say the rapture's already passed, there's not going to be a resurrection, or, or there's never going to be a rapture, that is actually called spiritual cancer at, that Paul talks about. He calls that kind of teaching vain babblings. It says shun profane babblings, he tells us in 2 Timothy 2, 15 through 19. Shun and stay away from these vain, these false teachers, these vain babblings. They're going to increase into more ungodliness. And their word will eat like a cancer, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already. They weren't saying that the resurrection of Jesus was past already, because it had, had already passed. They were saying that the resurrection of the body of Christ, that the rapture had already passed. And they overthrow the faith of some. Paul said, stay away from that teaching. Anyone who denies the rapture, the future rapture of the church, and try to negate it in some way. They're teaching a spiritual cancer. And Paul said, Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal. The Lord knows them that are his, and let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So here he equates their teaching with iniquity. He equates their false teaching against the rapture of the church as a spiritual cancer. And he says, as a result of this false teaching, it's going to increase to more ungodliness. That's what I've seen in the church in the past 20 years. This kingdom now dominion garbage where they deny the rapture of the church. One infamous false prophet uh, was bragging how because of his teachings, the churches for the majority, for the most part do not even believe in the rapture anymore. And he's right. And the preachers that do happen to know the word of God is true. And that the rapture of the church is, is, the, is a legitimate futuristic forthcoming uh, event that every believer should be looking forward to. They're so afraid of the backlash, the political uncorrectness in the church of teaching Bible prophecy that they're afraid to say anything. They're afraid they're going to lose members. If you have a pastor that won't teach the, the pre-tribulation rapture of the church, you have a, a pastor who is trying to tickle your ears and wanting to pad his pocket. He's more concerned about his kingdom than Jesus' kingdom. I'd get out of a church like that. I'd go to a church where they teach the truth, where they're not ashamed of the gospel of God. The final reason that Satan hates the pre-tribulation rapture teaching is because it causes God's people to watch and be ready for Jesus coming. Look at Hebrews chapter 9, 27 and 28. It tells us, And it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So also Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation or deliverance. He, 
what it's saying here is Jesus is going to come again a second time to bring deliverance, to rapture his people. And he's coming for those who are looking for him. He's going to appear to those who are looking for the rapture. So Satan doesn't want you to be ready. He doesn't want you to be looking for the rapture. Because that, those are the ones that Jesus is going to appear to. It doesn't say he's going to appear to those who are not looking for him. It says, Jesus is coming for them that look for him. Shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation? And Jesus tells us clearly, reiterating that, that fact in uh, Luke 21. He says, watch you therefore and pray always that you may be kind of worthy to escape all these things, talking about the tribulation time, seven years of hell on earth. Watch, he says, and pray always. There's two contingencies. You watch and pray always so you can be kind of worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Satan hates the doctrine of the rapture of the church because it causes God's people to look to Jesus to not be trying to build their kingdom down here, but to be doing the works of God, to be comforted, to be strengthened, and to realize that we have limited time to do the work of the Lord. It causes us to be ready for when the trumpet sounds.